Welcome back, my friends, to TNO, the last season of Europe. I'm your host, Libertarian Socialist Lover. And right now, we must talk about Checkmate. And in your capacities as a head of the Directorate of Revolutionary Preservation, your duties will include well, ensuring the immediate cessation of counter-revolutionary activity wherever it may rear its ugly head, ensuring the safety of the Soviet state, and keeping the people safe from all other hidden threats. Do you understand, Comrade Andropov? Yuri smiled, I do, Comrade Bukharina. Then, this was it then. The bet he had made such a long time ago and stick to the card finally paid off from fixer to intelligence director. Not a bad career path, if he said so himself. Good, Bukharina continued. Then I believe we're done here. Yuri moved to exit her office. And Yuri, she spoke as he left. He turned to face her, surprised to see a genuine smile spread across her face. Good luck. He returned the smile with one of his own. Somewhere along the line, they had actually became friends, it seemed. You too, comrade. You too. And another one. Yuri Andropov becomes our security minister. Very, very nice. But we shall begin with another focus for this episode. In which we still need to get rid of this tree. But we will get rid of this tree as soon as we're finished with it. Because it's already almost 1966. But survey the Republic. If we were to reunite Russia, we need to have access to the full potential of our territory, which is something we lack as of now. While there is some resistance against us, the primary problem is that we lack knowledge on what our resources are and where we can get new resources. Even with us piecing together everything we have, there are still large swaths of our lands that we know nothing about. The time has come for us to conduct a full survey of West Russia. This survey will include cities so we can fully understand what needs to be rebuilt, and the countryside so we can acquire access to new resources. It may take some time, but we need it in order to move forward and unite Russia. Which is very, very good. Now, we can just go ahead and reform it, but I don't want to lose the focus that we currently have. And eventually, we're going to have to fight for Oneg a little bit more, and our soldiers are training. Black market is available. And that's not very good. Uh, ooh. Nikola Gabal. Have anything here? For nope. All right, then. But that one actually takes quite a while to do, huh? 17 days, 21 days. That's not bad. Raise the red banner, though. Most of our new lands are not run by communists, and it shows. There is a fair amount of apprehension towards the government, as people believe that we will likely collapse like the Soviet Union of old. We must spread propaganda to inform the people that it was not communism's innate weaknesses that ruined Russia, but the insidious Germans who sought to annihilate us. Furthermore, we must try to encourage people to show pride in the Soviet Union. After all, it was under the Soviet Union that there was peace, not the monarchists or the Russian Republic. We shall raise the red banner of communism in every village and town, so the people see that we've returned to liberate all. Very good. More stability, more works for all that good stuff. I can't wait. Please give us more, 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 more. Bad for Italy. Good, good. And let's actually get some civilian construction because now we're building up a lot more civvies and such. And at this point, I did want to make some 40 combo with divisions, so these guys are actually really, really good. Uh, I'll cut that down. From here on out, it's 40s or nothing. Cool. And what do we have over here? Oh, can, eh, is that really worth it? I don't know if we'll be able to scavenge for loot. Uh, that takes 30 days to do. That's not really worth it since we'll get done with... Uh, 42 days? Uh, no, I don't think that's really worth it since it's going to be... Um, 50 days, 30 days. I don't think it'll come back in time for us to do it again, so there's really no point to do it. And it's not like we can raid anyway, so... It is what it is. And we need to prepare our industries. Let's double check to make sure that we actually are building up some cities. Yes, we are. Look at 20 and 11. Not bad. Not great. But the sooner... The later we wait for this... I mean, technically we won't get overextended administration... But it's still good to do, regardless. Oh, uh, what is our supply like right now? We need way more artillery, though. Ooh, that is not good. And more casts. Artillery, please. Um, I'll go down to four, maybe. But we still have stuff to build, so... And go down to there, too. That'd be good. And we definitely need more casts. Survey the Republic, my friends. Good. And we got more army XP. Wow. More political power and slightly decreased scoring times. We will raise the red banner. In addition, we shall do what? Well, we shall prepare our industries. With our increased access to resources, combined with our new conquest, the time is coming to expand our industrial output. Firstly, we must integrate the Kubyshev industry into our own. Their output must be factored into our planning and industrial production. Secondarily, we must begin to rebuild new factories in our lands. To access these new resources allows for our industry to diversify, letting us produce different products. With a combination of Kubyshev industry and new factories, we can be prepared for future wars and we can support the industrial workers, which is a core part of the mandate. But a couple comments. Uh, someone said, if we actually did assign yesterday uh, Suslov to the Bureau of Ideological Analysis, he would end up writing pages pretty much forever and no one would ever read them. That's exactly why we put him there. No reading for you, Suslov. Or maybe you can read a lot, but, you know, he'd just be in his little cubicle just sitting there until he dies. Which may not be a bad thing. May not be a bad thing. He's got four days left. Another one was that actually Speer won the Civil War. I don't think I've ever seen Albert Speer win the Civil War. Well, maybe once or twice, maybe my campaigns, but it's pretty rare. It's usually either Goring, which usually doesn't happen, but it's usually Bowman. Ah, uh, Bowman, balding Bowman. I was hungry. But yeah, this is... 
I kind of want to see what happens. I've, I, maybe I've never seen this before. Maybe I have. I, I think actually I have. But I never really paid attention to what he's actually doing here. Which I still only plays at the time of this recording as Speer. But happy 1966, everyone. Hope you're having a tremendous year. Uh, hopefully it'll go well for us. Hopefully. Uh, you know what? Uh, let's see you guys. All but one of these guys is 20 combat with. And you are what? 12. That is not going to fly here. You are now pilot the first 40 combat with infantry division. And you have upgrades? No, Alexander. No, that is kind of disappointing. Ooh. Oh, there goes those guys. Yeah. And once we're done with this, then we shall have a new focus tree. And we get one civilian factory, two infrastructure, and two more military factories. Not bad. Yeah, we need more already uh, anti-tank. Oh, that sucks. Ooh, you know what? I'm going to go down one just so we can make a few, uh, uh, plane or two, maybe? Where is it? Oh, get it down to there. Okay, so that's good enough. Uh, yeah, really pump these guys hard. And go there, too. Good. Omsk is looking pretty mighty thick. Feels like it's a little laggier than normal. I'm not sure why. But then again, just TNO, what do you expect? Oh, so if you're trading, huh? Uh, it's not really worth it. We have so much PP, and I'm really just saving the PP up for uh, the next stage so we can get some more societal development. And we've prepared our industries. And we should form the Western Russian Soviet Republic, my friends. Finally get another research slot in 1966. We're running late here. Like, this is really not good. Oh, well, that's actually really cool. Bukharin may have perished. Bukharin. But his legacy lives on not to a lesser degree because of his offspring. Initially expected to be a mere figurehead for the left inter intriguers in the Komi politics, Svetlana Bukharina, the daughter of the former communist leader proved herself to be a capable and decisive leader on her own, outmatching her allies and enemies alike and ascended as a leader of the socialist Komi. With her power assured, Bukharina reunited the rest of the West Russia under the Red Banner once again. Acknowledging her father's mistakes, Bukharina nevertheless persists on the communist vision and her hopes for restoration of the Soviet Union after years of anarchy and decay. Few post-Soviet warlords are willing to pledge their loyalty to the West Russian chairwoman, but Bukharina has not yet run out of her tricks to bring hostile Russian state to, to her will. To the power of the Soviets, and here we go. Just, I don't, it doesn't really matter to me. Uh, mm, construction speed's nice. There you go. There you go. Yes. Construction speed would not be bad. I gotta get these two. Mm, that we could get more stability. War support might not be bad either. I think I wanna do this one because I just wanna build. I wanna build. So oh, we can't build it right now. Uh, build, cut. Spend, 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 spend. There you go. Yeah, it's that extra research left. Oh, we have 1.71 billion, huh? From here on out, I'm, I'm focused on, focusing on a lot of industry. Holy crud. Warlord recruitment's gone, so be it. Okay, so that's not too bad. We're actually building, so... I'm going to invest in construction. Now, we saved up like 700-some political power. And we're at that point. Uh, ooh. Uh-oh. Oh, it might be glitched. Hold on, let's go through another day, maybe. Um... Okay, so I think this is glitch. I've, I've heard that this is glitch as well. I think we can still become unified, right? So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to maybe reload the game, and we'll see if maybe it gets fixed. All right, everyone. So we have a little bit of a problem. I looked it up, and other people have had this issue as well when playing as Bukharina. So I've tapped into the console, debug mode, and usually I don't show you this, but, you know, I turn it on. Uh, but we do have a lot of the options here for us to do stuff, which is kind of disappointing, but... We have the Russian generic debug, you can just unite all of West Russia, in which we annex Onega. We could do that, and there's global debug decisions, and, uh, bad word the crap out of Ausland. Joseph Goebbels? Huh. Regardless, what we want is, uh, the Bukharina regional tree. However, before we do that, um, we maybe want to request finished negotiations first. So let's go with that and see what happens. 14 days, and let's go and turn off the debug menu. Because I want to actually do this as, you know, normal as possible. I guess maybe that we were supposed to get this one first or something before we actually became the Soviet Republic of Western Russia. I don't know. So, let's see what happens once we get this done. Even though technically we are already at the next stage. Wow, that's a lot of debt. Or a lot of a deficit, I should really say. Ooh, peace conference? Who died? Um. Okay. Well, we have Omsk still here, so... The Far East. I wonder who's going to unify the Far East. Australia's looking pretty good, though. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. That's kind of nice. But, initial propaganda campaigns. we got five days left. And who's leading USA? Was it LBJ? Yeah, it's LBJ. On her own. Oh, there goes the coup. Very nice. Yeah, I, like I said, like other people have found this to be uh, a little buggy as well. Which is really kind of disappointing, but, you know, it is what it is. Anyway, I like each other. The libertarian socialists in England. And then they're all offended. Look at that. Wow. 
Alright, well, so let's see what happens. Come on, come on. Yeah, for some reason, I feel like this is just running a little slower than normal. We're still training, still training, still training. That's a lot of that's a lot of manpower. Even we're demobilizing more. Um, if you'd like to read about American supplies arriving, please go right ahead. This happens whenever the CIA wants to give us stuff. The Black League unifies the West of Beard. Very good. Spazzy Ball Americanets. Very nice. And, of course, nothing here. And... Uh, we'll give them a few days, maybe, for the Finns to decide on something before we just straight up invade. So let's get ready to go. Okay, so for the request for terms, the Finns are somewhat receptive to talks. Our ambassador informs us that Helsinki has agreed to a high-level diplomatic conference between our two nations. It's pleasing that the Finns have not done anything rash and have agreed to at least give us some time to make demands. Some cynics in our government have suspected Helsinki of merely stalling for time in order of full mobilization. The fact remains that war can be avoided. Before anything else, however, Helsinki wants to know our terms. So Onega must be returned to us, its population freed from the janissary duty for Finland. That much is essential. This does not mean, however, that the roots of a Finnish frontier should remain a dagger point at Finland's heart. We could simply demilitarize Onega and sign a non-aggression pact for the foreseeable future. The Finns would probably accept such a deal, and Helsinki would likely see it as too good to be true. Thus, a better deal would be the return of Onega in full with the troops in the region. Eastern Karelia will also be integrated to Russia as an autonomous region, with the Finns granted an open border into the region. This would return to us the Arc Arctic port of Murmansk and southwestern Karelia and its critical port city of Vyborg or Vipuri in Finnish, and would stay under Helsinki's control. Demilitarized zones and non-aggression treaties will follow, preventing any future war between our peoples. Of course, we could just demand it all. No matter how attached the Finns are to Vyborg and southwestern Karelia, their paltry army cannot save them for long. Onega's ramshackle mob of conscripts will not slow us long, if they choose to fight the countrymen at all. The Finns will greet our demands for Onega and all of Karelia, or pay for their arrogance. Now, it was recommended that we just get Onega, and that's my goal. Um... I don't want it to be militarized, though. So, we want the Russian majority ba territories back. All of them, though. We're going to go the middle one. So, we'll see what happens. I really don't want to go to war, but if war has to come to it, then so be it. Our guys are looking pretty good, though. Well, could be better. But whatever. And we still have these guys. I think this, this was the... Oh, that's the divisions we were using. What are we using for garrisons? Ah, the backup demand. The Finnish negotiators have pushed back on our demands for Eastern Karelia. They claim that, that they cannot l let a vast amount of territories be transferred unless they would betray thousands of Finnish citizens. The fact that this land was ours before 1936 has not gone our negotiators anywhere. Helsinki's diplomats have rightly commented that the 36 borders must not have been satisfactory to the Soviet Union as it attempted to invade Finland to correct them. Despite several attempts to reassure the Finns that we will not repeat the mistakes of Bukharin's Soviet Union, the negotiators have stayed on their position. It might still be possible to scale back our demands through the return of of Onega, sweetened by an offers of a demilitarized zone and a non-aggression treaty. On the other hand, our generals have remained on standby for a different type of negotiations. Perhaps it is time to make a more convincing argument for Eastern Karelia by force of arms? Uh, maybe just, oh, we don't know. That sucks. Um, I really don't care about Eastern Karelia. Hmm. But I don't want a demilitarized zone. That is fully Russian. So... The general staff assembles, like, I, I just want this. I'm not going to demilitarize this. It makes no sense for us to. It literally makes no sense for us to do this. Th this is Russian territory. I will not demilitarize Russian territory. Like, we can have stuff there, like, as a little border over here, but, you know... We're trying to be peaceful with the Finns, but they refuse it. The Onegan conscripts have been busy on the borderland, digging trenches and sitting into their forward positions. Ever since we've let the peace talks, or left the peace talks, Onegans have followed their master's biddings and begun preparing for all-out all, all war. It is regrettable that we must fight our Russian brothers, but the Finns' arrogance has brought us this upon us. Our general staff's analysis predicts a rapid collapse of the Onegan militia beyond them, the likes of Onega and Ladoga, create choke points that the that the Finns intend to defend bitterly. A rapid breakthrough followed by a push into Eastern Karelia will bring the Finns to their knees before they can fully mobilize. War it is then? Let's go. Look, I don't want war, but if they refuse to give us proper Russian territory, then, you know, our hands are tied. Our hands are completely 100% tied. And we will kill every single Onega soldier here if we have to. It's unfortunate, but it has to be like this. Alright, cool. And I know I should have done force attack, but whatever, I don't really care. Black market available. You find them, you kill them. Caffeine flow, very cool. That honestly should be enough to capitulate them. Good, good, good. And move as quickly as you can into here. If you can get this guy over to Kemi first, that'd be pretty good. Oh, we can integrate them too. That's good, yes. Yes, please. Go, 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 go. There is no waiting. You find the fins, you kill them. Oh, look at that! 
Oh, okay, so it actually did finally get over here. So it was really the peace conference, or not the peace conference, but the reunification thing that was bugged with oh, the Onega tree, which is really, very weird. Restore the Red Army, that wouldn't be bad right now. An economy for the people. Triumph for the Soviets. And I would like to reduce administrative strain on our budget, or just things first. Ooh, poverty rate, yes. A triumph for the Soviets. At last, socialism has reigned supreme in Russia in the way the Soviets intended. However, we must ensure that the regime does not become a vast, endless bureaucracy of Communist Party officials, all governing thanks to the fear of our leaders striking down upon them. With its reunification, West Russia provides an excellent opportunity to experiment and prove the effectiveness of true council communism. The Workers' Councils, the original Soviets, will be restored to their positions of power, and they will be the ones to make decisions through a reform system of government. No one is denying that this won't be an easy task, but this is why the General Secretary has assembled a team of the best people ready to get down to work and, rest and restore true socialism. Yes, please. Ah, uh, we love socialism. Kimmy, 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 Kimmy. Please, 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 please. After this war, we're going to make our Division 40 combo with. That's the goal. And we need more already, but guns are looking pretty good too, so. Um, how many fins have we killed? Only 600? Oh, that's not enough. They have a lot of manpower too, so. I hate these stupid little legs here, though. It's a really pain in the butt to fight them. Yeah, this is feeling a, a, quite a bit chunk, chuggier than normal. Oh, no, I thought... Before I started, uh, you know, the game back up again, they were at 98,000 manpower. Now they're only 22,000? What happened? You guys should just beat these guys up. Nice. Very good, very good. Keep going, keep going. I know it kind of sucks doing it like this, but whatever. Oh, yeah, spit artillery. Yes, yes. Very good. Keep these guys in their place. Good. Just go to Oulu. At this point, as much as I would just want to keep Onega, and that's the only one I want, since we're at war them anyways, and we're doing a focus tree, we might as well go all the way in. I'm sorry to whoever recommended that we should, like, just get Onega. But when the Finns say no, what, what can I do? What can I do? I gave them a peaceful option. I'm not going to demilitarize Russian territory. Are you kidding me? <laughs> uh oh, 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 so much for the Poles. Even with Speer here, the Poles must learn their place. We've killed off only 6,000 while losing 2,000. Still not too bad, actually, realistically. A triumph for the Soviets, in which assembled the Presidium. To give the power to the workers, a system of bicameral legislature has been convinced by, or conceived by the General Secretary Bukharina. The Congress of the Soviets will be a large body for which hundreds of Soviet representatives, hard workers from all across free Russia, are elected. They in turn vote on the members of the Presidium, the upper house as Westerners would call it. What Presidium members are to be carefully proposed by the General Secretary herself, as they will need to be capable of fulfilling their role as the chief advisors and planners. There are many possible candidates for Presidium members. Others are officials from the old union prepared to serve once again, while others are young, rising stars with great ambitions. Only the best will be chosen, they will be assigned with tasks important if we are to reach our former glory. Good. Offering ceasefire. If you like your brothers, please go ahead. But at this point, like, they yeah, are libertarian socialists, but they basically want to war with us. Like, let's be real here. I don't want to go to war with them, so. The victories of reform. As she approached the microphone, Svetlana Bukharina suppressed a nervous tremble. It finally happened. She had finally achieved what she had set out so long ago to do. After years spent in obscurity, and after more spent concealing her ambitions from those who saw her as only useful for her name, and yet after more spent in consolidation of Western Russia, she and through the extension of the people had triumphed, as she had no intention of allowing the opportunities now offered to be wasted. Uh, watching the technician carefully, she began speaking the moment he indicated that the microphone was active. She began by speaking of triumph by thanking all those listening for their efforts and sacrifices in support of the state's victory. Very quickly, however, she moved to speak of what the future held, of how she intended it to change their lives for the better. Social so socialism, she said, rested at the natural apex of political thought for a combined economic progress and collective human care, but all too often had not been impl implemented in a proper fashion by her predecessors, by other so-called revolutionary states. By, she said, with a great upper father's union, she intended to correct this. Progressive economic Economic and social policies were soon to be introduced, and those obstructing such reforms would be swept aside. Equal equality of all kinds would be emphasized, continuing the legacy of some who had come long before and ensuring that Russia was known as the champion of equitable action. Change, she promised those listening, was imminent. They needed only to watch and reap the rewards besides. A new day and true day for better socialism. Good. Yeah, I'm sorry, but sports rivalry? Okay, so if you like to read about this, go right ahead. This happens every time he plays West 
uh, Russian warlords up. Oh, this is better than shooting each other. Oh. Cool. 23,000 is not enough dead fins. They asked for... They pretty much asked for this, so... Don't blame me, man. Don't blame me. Guys, just go in. It would suck if we got cut off here. Helsinki, how are you? Yeah, this is definitely chugging a little bit more than normal. I'm not running anything in the background again. Hmm. Good. Uh, if you want to read about that, just go right ahead. I I'm sorry, but we're going all the way in. I'm not going to tolerate this BS from these guys. I don't care who they are, who they think they are. Nope. Well, just going to trick you then. Let's get a port still. That's good. All right, so the off run condition surrender. If you'd like to read about this, please go right ahead. It is what it is. Murmani. So sad. I mean, I, I just wanted Onega. That's all I wanted. And they refused to give it up to us. We've killed off 42,000 of them. But the Finns need to learn their place. So I apologize if you don't like me taking all this stuff. But it is what it is. It's good. And fight the black market. Well, we don't have the PP for that really. Oh, initiate propaganda. Uh, we'll get to that later on. So There you go. At this point, uh, I want to make these guys 40 combo with, but we actually need, like, legit 40 combo with division, so. As civil the Presidium and Soviet Humanism. It is no secret that the USSR of old was not exactly a champion of human rights. General Secretary Bukharina recognizes this and knows of the events that took place in the interwar period in Russia. However, it will be the goal of the new regime to change the public perception of itself from an allegedly totalitarian state of one of equality and opportunity. In the age of communication, it has never been easier to spread a message through radio and on TV. The government will use that to its advantage and reaffirm to its people and to the world that it is dedicated to the principles of humanism and to an egalitarian society that is different from the failed union. Once we've done that, we can begin to make sure that it becomes a reality on the ground and a new era for the nation will be ushered in. Good. More political power, monthly population, recovery rate, yes, and the selection process, my friends. Bukharina is a woman of measured and deliberate tones, but the exhaustion in her voice is all too real as she begins the announcement. So, too, is her triumph. The Congress of the Soviets has been formed, the long struggle over who to select and who to reject for the presidium finished. It is coming to a close at long last, and the business of real governance can truly begin. Her hand trembles as she reads aloud the words, each blending into the next as the Congress registers with her candidates with polite and faceless nods. A unionist here, a politician there, a general or two thrown in for diversity's sake. She can't quite remember the specifics of everything anymore. Her head is trembling with effort necessary to stand in as it is, but what she does know is that while she still was still, was still lucid, she had taken measures to build the broadest possible base. She will not repeat the mistakes of her father. Never again will Russia crumble from the errors of a few. She stumbles, almost trips and falls. Panic echoes through the Congress, and guards stand up to help her. She she waves them off, a leader always stands up before people, she thinks, and resumes reading. A police officer, one of the good few ones, she thinks, and she's finished at last. Poli polite applause comes at her as her speech ends. She staggers out of the podium, stumbles into her seat, and takes the long, long swing of the devil's brew. She barely has time to, s to let it down her throat when the first rejection comes. A unionist is a good choice, yes, but according to the remarks he made to a speech in a soul, soul factory, his allegiances to independent unionism are rather in doubt. And as for his own capacities to rebuild the revolution, has the chairwoman not noticed that his work is with so-and-so employers? Bukharina stares blearily into the Congress, head unbowed, something raw and primal inside of her wants to burst into a long, silent scream in, in spaces of her head. She indulges in it. I hate bureaucracy. Ooh, that's not bad. Oh, one of the most following things we did. Blind the Ultra Visionaries, which I'll play someday again. We lose stability from that. Stability piece at last. Uh, that's not bad. Uh, free worker. Eight hour work days. Oh, that's not bad. I kind of like that one. Women in the workplace with gender equality. And let's small the population, recruitable population, that's uh, we, could use, we could probably unuse that. Return the colon tie, a culture of questioning. Empower the councils? For your own good. Open the government? Free press. Let's go with a free woman for more output. A, fast, a fact that a woman is a leader of the state is already a testament to the equal opportunities presented by the new union, but is not quite enough, as per the general secretary's wish. Steps will be taken in the direction of gender equality within the framework of the socialist state. 
To begin a committee will be formed of special advisors from both genders uncovered Bukhari in his orders, and his purpose will none be other than to support social equality and solve any disputes in that regard from there. It will be a process of gradually getting laws and amendments passed so that women may finally be free and equal to men in the workplace, at home, and in society as a whole. A new shipment arrives. Oh, look at that. Oh, whoa, look at that. Many ships with suspicious port registries and questionable cargoes arrive every day along the freezing coast of Russia, which produces with products that can make or break world lords, will be the difference between life and death for the many leaders seeking to reform Russia. Today, another ship, such ship arrived in a port, but this one is different only in its scale, packed to the brim with weapons and ammo. This old, leaky ship is carrying more armaments than her factories could produce in months. The cargo is provided by our American CIA contacts as they seek to aid us in a quest to eventually rebuild Russia and take the fight to our common enemies in the East. While the guns may be outdated and old, they are gods unto us, allowing our city to grow stronger. Every little bit helps. I love the American CIA. Whoa. While Russia was never a strongly industrialized nation in its prime, our people dream of mighty factories, strong and efficient production lines, and modern conveniences brought on by mass industrialization. Today, our dreams become a little bit closer to fruition. American businessmen have brought over shipments of industrial equipment, heavy machinery, and technical experts to send to our industrial sectors and factories. Many in our government and even the common population are thankful for this incoming aid, and the Americans themselves say that if their investments are successful, they will be back with more. Regardless of where it came from, our industry just got a bit, bit mightier, and our country a bit more developed as a result. We will match our industrial might one day. Good. We get even more equipment. I love... Jesus Christ. Oh, the CIA. Yo, give me a job, man. I love the CIA. Nice. All right. Looks like we actually have, finally have some divisions here to work with. And if that's the case, I want to go ahead and maybe edit these guys. How, much, how many main battle tanks do we have? Uh, APCs are looking good. Main battle tanks not looking too good. So at least we can replace or add some APCs here. We're going to go with five for now. Do we have enough APCs? No, we don't really. Uh, military police is nice. So change that around too. Um, get our artillery and change this with main battle tanks. Cool. A free woman. The Soviet Humanism. Despite the many questions being asked of him, the professor remained patient and composed. He cannot blame the students for the confusion. After all, like them, he too had been removed from academia for many, many years, only having returned with the imposition of renewed order. As he answered no another such question, he took care to emphasize the importance of the Soviet and an all-important concept of Soviet humanism. The distinction was critical. He announced through the lecture hall and would, could not be overlooked, at least if one were truly to understand the system. Humanism, he declared, was well understood to represent the belief in promotion of human, human agency and of the inherent value of every human being. But, it also had traditionally been defined through a non-socialist lens with the position of that the agency within hierarchies of political or ecclesi ecclesiastical being a subject of intense focus, and this acceptance of such social construct was inherently divisive, inherently destructive. Soviet humanism accounted for this, and in doing so, elevated the philosophy tremendously. By eliminating religious considerations, emphasizing egalitarian social policy, and reorienting the lens from external hierarchies and factors to internal improvement within both the individual and the state as a whole, it promised progress on a scale never before seen. It promised to truly and finally place humanity at the forefront of thought. Who, the professor asked, could possibly argue against such a goal with conviction of any kind, and that at last. There were no more questions. An achievable goal? Perhaps. Perhaps. Oh, military austerity. Oh, yeah. We keep doing that. We want to spend, 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 spend. Build, 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 Oh, I want to increase the economy for the people. Let's do that one. The fall of the USSR during the First Patriotic War was, among many other things, caused by the flaws in its economic system. Well, our predecessors surely tried their best at organizing a socialist economy, in the end, they failed due to both the technological and ideological limitations. If we were to rebuild Russia, we needed to create a functional economy where the citizens receives from the states what he or she needs, and gives in return his loyalty and his work. With such reforms, we'll be one step ahead of our competitors, and we'll create a country both powerful and fair. I want to do that just a little bit first, just because... I, oh, more civilian factors. I want to get more academic base. I want to do these things so badly, and we're running behind in time. But i got to get rid of this overextended administration, which I think is just, just god-awful. But at least we do get a bonus for industry, which we can pretty much immediately use as soon as we get this focus done, which is going to be extremely important because we're really behind on technology. Getting that third research slot takes took us way too much time. Boom. All right, when's the next tech done to the Gender Equality Commission. The chairman of the commission seemed like an odd choice at the first glance. Why well, had Bukharin had chosen such an innocuous young woman with little experience and even less credentials within the party to lead the work? The chairman, chairwoman was well, seldom accused of political interference, but there were outright rumors of corruption swirling around the room and from the start. The, the choice was so unexpected it was hard to believe it had not been planned. When the commission's first meeting kicked off, however, all doubts were dispelled. The woman, introduced only as comrade Ekaterina, outlined an agenda so ambitious and detailed it could only have come from a consumer consummate political operative. In days, she pushed through a proposal outlining radical changes to women-specific wage rate laws and housing specifications, and within weeks, it was on the floor of the Congress of the Soviets. Ekaterina 
brought the commission to vibrant action in other ways too. It was quickly discovered that a connection to industry players had brought bought them all a window into the closed space of the business world. A dinner meeting between became a formal invitation and then sprouted into full blown conference complete with research initiatives. It was a dream come true for the committee's members. It seemed that the sky was the limit with this mysterious young woman. Although never thought to question the committee had, one member was not so naive as Ekaterina was packing her things in the meeting room one evening that a party operative approached her and whispered that she knew who Ekaterina was, or at least who she had worked with. Industry access, windows to all the spheres of the government, secret projects that appeared and disappeared at will. Only one ghost remained this influential in the Republic. Ekaterina chuckled and whispered to her Sosov is dead. I, however, am very much alive. And then she was gone, leaving only a scattering of notes in her wake. An internal affair. Oh, boy. But, uh, let's see. Eight-hour workdays is cool. I get more stability. Lose uh, stuff. Um, none of these help lower administrative strain. Uh, let's get down here. Open the government for your own good. Authoritarian socialism. Oh, but we're going to go with declare an extraordinary session. Despite the best efforts of the resurgent Russia to combat any remaining counter-revolutionary movements, some cells and underground groups that still linger remind us of the days of the Komi Republic's turbulent uh, politics. Sisovite and Sadanovite supporters continue to exist both among the citizens of the country and in some cases inside the government, perhaps plotting to overthrow it. This cannot stand. The president responsible for governing the country and the director of a revolutionary preservation responsible for keeping it safe. We'll convene as soon as possible to discuss solutions to this urgent matter. Under the supervision of the General Secretary, their task for the near future will be to eliminate the last threats to the state, and so that we can move forward, my friends. As we should. Alright, so let's keep building up our industry as much and as fast as possible. Uh, let's go with this one, too. Because that more factory repair speed's okay, free repair's okay, but I'm just really thinking about, like, the lower, the lines behind that, too, so. And we also have to think about the, um, next time we get some poverty or stuff improvement. Oh, it's lagging very hard. What's going on? Soviet the Republic of Western Russia. Oh, well, I don't... Re oh! What the heck is this? Milt... Milt... Ab Wait, what the? I don't think I've ever seen this one before. Who the heck is Alexis von Rune? Militarbezirk Ruslan. Remember the Zolverein? Chaos in there. Porous border. God, I can't wait for... Rex Commissariat Moscovine to actually have a, you know... Thing. A focus tree. God, I... I don't think I've really ever seen paid attention to this. Auslandische Besatzungsrat. Zeba. What are you doing, Speer? Goodness gracious. Construction is coming along very nicely. An economy for the people, my, my friends. Very good. Next up, ah, oh, the Lady of Steel. I admire your work with the All-Russian Workers Association, Comrade Bukharina is at last in her element. Not in the offices, not even giving speeches, but here in the midst of the workers. Like a fish to a water, she thinks. In fact, I believe I've given a speech at your employer's headquarters regarding the necessity of a perpetual revolutionary mindset and the promotion of employees. Were you in attendance? The bashful unionist nods, and Bukharina flashes one of her brighter smiles. Then I believe you know... My stance on the matter of the workplace hierarchy. Thank you very much for your work, comrade. She pats on her so pats her on the sh shoulder and moves to the next one. A member of the River Fisherman Association, she believes. The long, chaotic state of logistics has put them in close association with the Congress, and she gets his name on sight. Ah, oh, yeah, like a pause. He widens his eyes, and Bukharina... Uh, Oops, my apologies. Moves in for the kill. Such a pleasure to see you again. I hope the assistance you've granted your workmen have uh, proven of use. Yes, you heard chuckles. It's been something of a struggle. I suppose you're no better off, chairwoman Bukharina. This, he gestures at the crowd arranged around them. A gauntlet of eager faces and good cheer. This must be very daunting for you, yes? Bukharina looks confused for a moment, but she's never been one to lose composure. Ah, uh, pardon me, I was taken quite by surprise at your question, but to answer, no, this is like breathing to me. Unconscious, I suppose, perhaps. I just like slacking off, she chuckles, and subconsciously checking her time. And God, has that put her off schedule? There's a meeting in the evening, and Mev Medvedev will kill her if she's out of sorts. My apologies, I must really be going now. I wish you the Best of luck with your resolution process. As Bukharina turns to leave, Yara calls out, Try not to collapse with the energy, Madam Chairwoman. She shouts something in return, but the crowd swallows her noise in its own clamor, and she isn't quite sure what he hears. Only three more hours of this? Not bad. I love more GDP, don't we all? And a loyal police force. Our past of cooperation with Suslavite and Zadanovite elements still haunt us, and they have contacts in important positions even to this day. For example, the Directorate of Revolutionary Preservation, a body meant to serve the government and protect its people, has possibly been infiltrated by these revisionists and must now be reformed. Trusted men and women who have stood on the side of the General Secretary since the early days will be put in charge of the operation to identify and purge any possible dis dissidents and agents. Anyone deemed disloyal inside the U URS will be discharged, and if their treason to the state is proven tried for the crimes. Only through a clean police force will the revolution be able to survive and, of course, expand. Man, we have so much manpower. I love it. 
Uh, I think we might go with this one next because I want to improve academic base. Make a great classroom meetup. Ooh, research facilities would be good. Learning from the past is not bad. A union of workers is good to get too. Oh, Jesus, there's so much I want to do. Max factors in it. Ooh, maybe we want to delay to get this one though because we want to maximize that for as long as possible as much as I love industrial equipment. So, construction speed, I love it, love it, love it, love it. Love it. The German hegemony returns. It seems that the Reich has returned to the world stage. A necessary thing. Bucharina slammed her tea flask onto the binders. They made a very satisfying thud at his advisors' cringe. I was assured that the Cisalvite splitters had been removed. Assured by the chief of the police that they posed no threat to her security, what was I given my assurance for then? She placed another binder upon the table. This one landed like a feather. This is cursed. Italy joins the code with prosperity sphere. But none dared to look at its contents, precisely because they already knew what it was. The president moved past the dizzying heights of rage and took flight into the, unrare, the rarefied heights of a cold, calm fury. This room fell even more solid than it had been previously. Several staffers made motions to escape or toilet breaks, fleeing at the minutest of, uh, of nods. I'm only going to ask this once. Can I be assured that no such attack will happen again? The chief of police's averted gaze told her all she needed to know. Very well. I wanted to avoid this unpleasantry, but we cannot afford to have this despoil the revolution. Gather the directorate for revolutionary preservation and call the head of the presidium to my office. Upon her lips was effect something that looked like a smile, and yet so utterly constricted it looked more like a particularly painful rictus. Her secretary nodded, and only barely suppressing her trembling, and made a careful nod upon or note upon her calendar. You are dismissed. Do not return unless I call. As a gathered staff dispersed into the depths of the chamber, Bukharina. Bukharina collapsed onto herself, listening only to the guilt that burrowed deep into her heart and cradled to her, cradled her tea flask. I don't want to do this, but I have to. Oh boy. And with the Soviet education system, a just and lasting peace, the prison glared out of the gathered members of the directorate <clears throat> and the presidium. A detached part of her mind, and the part she still allowed to roam free, admitted that the re they represented the best and the worst of her regime. The shining mind she'd found to build the revolution and the monsters in the night that she trusted to keep it safe from her despoilers. It wouldn't matter after this, though. What they did next would make up make them all monsters in equal measures. There'll be blood enough to share. Clearing her throat, she rose to speak. I've called you here today in view of your oath. When you were sworn into office in your capacities, I asked you of the strength and resolve to defend the revolution by any means necessary, even if that meant suspension of formalities and conventions that others could afford, but we cannot. She looked down. That moment has now arrived. Again, she looked up, and that was gone. Iron and the fire that lit it were all that remained. We have previously agreed to an informal armistice with the Sussovite and Zidanevite elements in our republic and legislature. For the sake of the nation, revolution we are embodied. This armistice is henceforth suspended. All necessary measures are to be taken to remove them. Social circles and sympathizers are to be considered complicit. A tentative voice rose from the rear. Are you suggesting the use of unlimited interrogation? Under Bukharina's desk, a hand-knotted and torn strip of paper was kneaded and thrown aside. On it was written in the terms, Reprieve? All necessary measures. I cannot hold back. Not now. The Soviet education system, though. One of the greatest changes the Soviet Union brought was basic free education for all. Under the Tsars, peasants weren't allowed to study in order to keep them forever under the noble's thumb. With education comes innovation, and with innovation comes power. Sadly, 20 years of civil strife and German bombings had destroyed the old education system in both a physical and metaphorical sense. With schools raised to the ground and the children forced to work to feed themselves and their families, learning has become secondary or even tertiary concerns. We shall no longer tolerate such an injustice. Our children need to learn so that they may improve both themselves and Mother Russia. We shall rebuild those school systems, or the old schools, and teach a new generation of young boys and girls the value of culture, and through it, how to be an outstanding Soviet citizen. Very, very good. And then we'll keep going down the blind the ultra visionaries and shackle the dogmatis dogmatists. Oh, oh, never mind. Okay, so it, just, it also did this because Zidanev is actually already dead, so if you don't read about that, please go right ahead. But pairing a faint. Yuri Andropov had never been comfortable with fine food. He could never quite bring himself to the focus on dietary extravagance, not when there was so much to be done and people to be scanned. Bukharina was evidently a woman of similar tastes. Gazing around the Spartan confines of the cafe, it could be, call, if it could be called that, Yuri admitted that it was exactly as proletarian as he'd imagined the chairman would like. Svetlana looked up at their plate, shooting a quizzical gaze. Enjoying the food? I suppose we could have chosen a better establishment. Yuri shrugged. Truth be told, Madame Bukharina, it's all the same to me. I don't care much for the affairs of the palate, of the pal palate these days. The conversation trailed off, stillborn, and for a while the two ate in silence. Bukharina pushed her plate away. I've noticed the director's latest report on loyalty and rank and file unions. Very well written. I had struggled to do better myself. Yuri tilted his head a little in acknowledgement, but it said nothing. The chairman raised her cup to her lips so that... What she could next be heard and echo. Are there similar concerns with the leadership of the directorate? The glint in the couple is unnaturally bright. Yuri put the flash of light before him in the open window about two meters away together and chuckled to himself. The kid was growing fangs. I did not believe so, chairwoman. Of course, now the game was up. The pistol in her handbag seemed almost gauche. But it was a good effort from an amateur. 
Perhaps she would have made good as an operative as she was a politician. My apologies, chairwoman. I must leave for business. Enjoy your meal. You already leaned to close and whispered, and get your sniper to blur his scope a little. It was painfully obvious. Even so, good effort, yes. Then he was gone, leaving a frustrated, or flustered, really, pure woman to pack up their luncheon. Her dignity. Professional courtesy. Oh, get even more cost. Oh, that's not good. But get more political power, which is eh, not bad. So we're going to do that one. And then shackle the dogmatists, because Suslite's influence is too strong here for now. Uh, shackle the dogmatists. Peace at last. Yes, that would be really good to do as well. Ah, <sighs> shackle them. We shall. Mikhail Suslov. Hardline faction has been sidelined and Suslov himself removed from the equation entirely. However, we still need to deal with the many of its members who remain in public office. They need not be purged as thoroughly as the Donetsk people, but we still must remove them from positions of power. A few retirements here and a re few reassignments there, and all dog all the old dogmatists must not be able to threaten our efforts. Very, very good. Ah, there's quite a few weeks left. Cool, and we're still building, 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 building. I wonder when we get the next level. But what is our social development like right now, actually? Uh, academic base is going up by quite a bit. Five, research is three. Agriculture is 4.5, which actually, we're in mass mechanization already. So we're almost stopped here. Poverty is pretty bad, but it's getting better. Rudimentary factory lines is seven. Industrial base, 2.75. And widespread cronyism, well, that's pretty darn bad. The man with a thousand lies, or less, really. There was a certain rhythm Andropov mused to the work he did here at the directorate. The funny thing is that it was really wasn't different from the work he did in the cavorting with Suslov. One glance through the dossiers, picking apart the details of someone's life and family and career, and at the end, one made a choice. If the choice was positive, Andropov would add it to the large pile on the left, if not to the small, neat, and alphabetically arranged stack on the left. Rinse and repeat. Okay. Andropov had once made the mistake of talking to a priest about his line of work. The latter had mumbled something about sheep and the goats, and then he retreated. Well, even though having to read the good book, Andropov knew what he was on about. His job was essentially that of a judge. The good and the bad, the assets and the liabilities, the quick and the deaf. And there have been so very many of the latter in recent years and days. Yuri Muse, for some reason, the headquarters was sending a request at vastly increased rate. Even compared to the early days of the revolution. They were lucky that the director had even recently gotten a wave of new recruits. This stack had been a result of what he had estimated to be three months worth of labor. Otherwise, well, no revolutionary tale to survive the collapse of a security apparatus. A staffer poked his head out of the door, side of the door, yelling, Director Andropov, this is a fresh stack of work for you down the hall. Andropov stretched his sword back, hiding a wry smile. The visionaries all sounded different, but his unceasing labor was, in the end, the same under every one of them. Well, I suppose there was one factor which had changed. Coffee's better under Bukharinas. Bukharinas, yes, yes, yes. Cool. Yeah, look at all the political power we have. 0.96. Drastic measures, my friends. A knock on the door in the waning hours of the afternoon during the preparations for dinner it was not what Vasily expected out of his fright, and nevertheless, he checked his loophole on the door, and it recoiled. A stern-looking man of the Directorate of Revolutionary Preservation stood on the wooden step up, escorted by two more officers carrying ominous black briefcase and an armored personnel carrier which idled ten meters away. He wanted to run, run there, and run then and there, but the door was the only entrance to his modest home and was locked down tightly. Were they here for him? Why were they here? Had they learned about the alcohol relabeling? He swallowed nervously and looked to his left, where the two children, Ivan and Katya, were washing the pots. He thought about calling out to them, but couldn't. If this new director was anything like the Okhrana that had been active here for a mere a few years since ago. With nervous, uh, nerveless fingers, he pulled the latch. The door swung open and retreated as far as he could against the wall. The first officer crossed the threshold, something uh, carrying something concealed in his long coat. Katya jumped and hid beneath her brother, or behind his brother, her brother. His head swiveled towards Vasily, and he gestured, bringing three more people inside. Vasily's eyes widened in shock. Chirwin Svetlana Bukharina stepped into his humble home with a hand on her black-brimmed hat. In one hand, she held a book. In the other, a pen. Ivan looked down and cried out and dropped the pan that he was carrying inside of the pistol on her belt. She did not waste a moment, placing the book on the table as the URS officers stacked their cases next to it. Comrades, she decided, as if she had done it a thousand times before, we're here to liquidate you. Another cry from Katya was quickly cut off by the lead URS man who opened his case. The children were just too far away, separated by him for, by four well-armed people. Vasily braced himself for the cruel gunshots, closing his eyes. Wasn't she what, different from them? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. But I guess we have peace at last. Oh, boy. <laughs> But liquidation, really. Nothing had happened. For what felt like an eternity, he hesitantly opened his eyes, expecting the worst, instead of his own gun. Oh, my apologies about this. Oh, yeah, this is very laggy for some reason. I apologize, but it's TNL. 
The URS officer who had knocked on the door was now holding another book out of his hand, offering it to him. The other officers and the chairwoman stood next to the table, reaching into the black cases. At a glance, he noticed that the pistols were gone, replaced by books and writing utensils. He took the book from the officer gingerly before trying to flatten himself against the wall even more. It was useless to him, but perhaps Oban could get him out of unharassed, without the unexpected quartet looking under the floorboards. Bukharina, Bukharina placed her book on the table, smiling to the children before speaking. I apologize for the unexpected visit, comrade, she began, but before presenting a piece of paper with some... An illegible text on it. The village has been marked as a next step for liquidation of rural Ill illiteracy. Has the local council informed you of your local liquidation point? The children tentatively inched towards the door. Vasily blinked once, uncomprehending. Did that mean this is all an overly threatening entrance for what he understood as a political reading group? The seeds of a chuckle escaped his mouth to be strangled in a moment by anxiety. Sensing that compliance was on the was a way out, he let himself begin to form words. No, I, no, comrade chairwoman, he said. Bukhari nodded slightly. Your locality is assembled a center in the back room of the town hall. My sincere apologies for the lack of notification. I am honored to welcome you to attend in person. As we began to pass out books to the children, all Vasily could do was nod politely and taking one for himself. He could not understand the cover. Hopefully, he thought, keeping with the program of the compliance, that that would soon change. Perhaps we'll remember this fondly later. Cool. At last, their position in the government is secure. The esoterists and the hardliners have been removed from power, and any threat they would have posed to us has been effectively neutralized. We still need to ensure that those in government who have voiced concerns are properly dealt with, but after some certain messaging, they should get the picture. Our republic has been united under the left, and we may move towards a better future for all. Which is a good thing. It's, uh, let's go and grab this one, too. More output is extremely crucial for us right now. We need way more artillery, way more anti-tank. We might have 14 divisions, but we got to prepare against Omsk, and they are filled with nothing but hatred. Something that we don't have right now. We got a lot of manpower. I've up to 17 divisions, so that's not too bad. But still, that's not going to be easy to beat. Keep building, 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 building. You're not done yet. I got about five more days. Too bad we didn't imprison him or his withdrawn from politics. Maybe we should just cut him off. But oh well. It's still only 66. Oof. The aspects of culture. Bukharina had an empty desk in the Ministry of Culture that she wanted to fill, but she had, uh, had an obstacle. Yekaterina Fortseva, ultra visionary in disguise, or true believer in Bukharinists, or Bukharina's ideals. She had recently renounced Zanov and thrown her support behind Bukharina, but was she genuine? The question had stumped the chairwoman for a few minutes now. Looking into her past, Fortseva had gained the Communist Party's attention by writing a scathing critique of a film displayed in Siktivkar Theater and a satire of the former Soviet Union's leadership. She called for the Communist Party to boycott the theater until it cut all ties with the film director and stopped displaying the film. It had worked, and she was elected to the former Pre Republic's National Assembly later that year. Fertseva has arrived before Bukharina's popularity surge, and there's already allies with Zidanev and Bukharina. Bukharina arrived in Siktivkar. The past, this past could mean that she was a reformist and renounced to Zidanev when it became clear that Bukharina was a real force and a former reform within Siktivkar. Alternatively, she was always an ultra-visionary and was working with Zidanev to undermine Bukharina. Fertseva clearly cared about po cultural matters and clearly wanted to ensure that revolutionary ideals properly reached the public. The question was, what ideals? The position was fairly limited as well, the mere administrative manager, but it was a principle that mattered. Bukharina needed not necessarily trust, but at least to guarantee that members of her government didn't seek to undermine her authority. We can trust her, she can have her position. For, she holds ultra-visionary ultra sympathies, we can't trust her. Let her have her position, since Zadanov is dead. Much utopia. I'd love to do that, but we cannot do that yet. But we shall do a free worker. Why not? We could use a little more stability, sure. The goal of the communist state is, above all, to guarantee the freedom and the power of the common worker. The government understands this and will immediately begin taking progressive measures with said goal in mind. Primitive laws and workers' rights already exist, but they are often not optimal or not followed in certain areas. These laws will be reformed and codified as per the wishes of the Congress and the Presidium, while those who do not follow them are to be punished accordingly. In addition, the changes will be publicized through the media so that everyone learns of the leaps of the new union which it has made. Good. Even just keep building and learning. God, we're not building fast enough. In about a month, we'll have that one done, which is not bueno. Can we fight this yet? We need more stability for this, right? Yeah, more than 50% stability. Uh, when can we do this? 67? 69? Yeah, 69. So we've got quite a few years before we really have to kill off Omsk, or the West Siberian Provisional Authority. These guys are still going at each other. Man, that sucks for them. They're probably going to get killed off by the Count of Siberia, too. Ah, Shostakovich. I have wait, quite a few more divisions than us, probably. It's weird, because even after, like, the fade and fade out earlier in this episode, I still, like, didn't do anything in the background. Alright, so i got three days left, and we'll do the free worker. 
Because as much as I love to do this, oh, increases GDP and GDP growth significantly. The Iron Beasts. Uh, not bad, not bad. Beast of last and a free worker. Do we get another event, maybe? A relaxing evening. The only thing matter, uh, better than her final triumph, Svetlana Bukharina decided was the amb amb ambience. The city lights of Rykov spread out below the windows of her personal office, forming a glowing sign that the proletarian state needed, need fear German bombs no longer. In the blackest hours of the morning, only when one... Only when cleaning crews and on-duty URS agents were present, they always shone so beautifully. A perfect compliment to the friendly smell of the teacup on her desk and the sweet romantic jazz that the record player was playing. In, in her way, this was a personal paradise, alone, peaceful, and victorious, lounging in her chair in a way that would never be, she would never be allowed to be photographed. It was the calmest part of the week, the time that she had to herself to sit in her solid, solitary office and get a few minutes of reflection and relaxation. Moving her feet off the desk to surface and swiveling the chair around, she looked back out to the half-shuttered window once more. In the distance, red fireworks were being fired off, celebrations by her supporters, no doubt, of the final neutralization of the sadly misguided opposition. Their own victory day. It was a gesture she approved of, privately, a celebration, making a positive example. Those who tragically resisted progress would eventually come around, exposing to the joint community of true progressive society. Repression past a certain point would merely lead our ideals to form their metaphorical fortresses. She took a sip of tea and closed her eyes, moving a single finger in the air as if conducting the music. Finally, she thought the first phase of her work had become a success. Everything was working just as it should be. Quiet hours. My apologies so far in this episode, guys. Like, for some reason, like, everything, TNO was just running just so much more slowly, so I restarted my computer, but the morning after. A letter from party member suspended. Katalina Miyazova. I knew even after that first kiss faded into twilight glow that something was wrong about you. Perhaps that is what drew me to you in the first place. I knew from the way you spoke, as if half your body was in some far off realm of high above, that you were involved in something that I dare not name, for fear it would sweep me away, too. I never expected this. Piece by piece, I was drawn with you, drawn by you rather, into a web of lies, deceit, layer upon layer of hidden truth, and I accepted it because I wanted so desperately to believe in what you said. A special section of the director at the mission, you said Bukharina needed people to defend her. That the left needed wa night watchmen to protect it from the monsters in the night. Even as even as I began to see more than just money in the invoices, I signed in my name for you. I believed in what you said. Now I, s I see now that the only menace Bukharina needed protection from was your merry band. How could I possibly have ignored the invoices to Seslav? And as you smiled at me and promised that your alliance was nothing but a red herring, were you really thinking of me, of us? No, this Anton Aronovich Pachikov. I stared into your eyes, so deep and rich like endless golden fields as the red banners fluttered around us, and you promised never to leave me. I wish I had never swept into your arms. I wish I never had known you at all, and I cannot, no matter how painful it is to remember you, cast you aside, I will ask you one last time. Are you truly a Cecilvite mole? Did you, did what we shared mean nothing to you? Please tell me, I will never see you again. The least you can do for someone who loves you and loves you still, as a single honest word. Yours, Kalina, and look how much faster it's running now. I really do apologize, like, it should not have been that slow previously, so... Sometimes your computer just does not work. But return to Kolontai. Alexandra Kolontai, as one of the few female old Bolsheviks, is considered an early champion of women's rights and good for reason. And for good reason. She spearheaded the idea of Marxist feminism, the idea that true gender equality in all aspects can only be achieved as a result of socialist revolution like the one the Bolsheviks planned and eventually executed. While that may not have been completely achieved, it is now Comrade Bukharina's will and her duty to continue Kolontai's legacy. Her ideology will not be only accepted, but we shall bake it into law as not, not an insignificant part of the new Union's ideology and policy. Therefore, we will assure Russia is entrenched in as a champion of equality and one of the first nations to truly confront the matter. Good, good, good. And a question, uh, culture questioning. The Russians and their ethnicities inside our borders are often defined by centuries-old traditions and moral codes. However, what do they, what do they matter if all they do is hold us back and prevent progress comparable to the rest of the world? Lenin and Bukharin started started launch the idea of questioning these long-lasting traditions as they occasionally proved to be hurdles in the development of society, but never finished it. The warlord era was another blow to these new ideas, but here we are to fix that. The General Secretary and the Presidium have agreed on a course of action through which the state will encourage rethinking in these ancient cultural trends. An abundance of speeches and propaganda will help to achieve much-needed progress, all in all things equal. Occasionally, when Mariana had the time and her overseer wasn't looking, she'd slip away to a place she knew the industrial floodlights shone on almost everything, but they hit certain alleys with their, with their bulk just as easily. There she would read page after page the works that kept her alive. Her parents had died young, and she, all she'd known as Shiguto Doho was this, fluorescent lighting, endless cues of machinery, and the quiet sorrow of being alive. But Kolontai's words kept her going, and that was a fire in them. There was a fire in them, an inexpressible celebration that let Mariana know who she really was. In her words, for the first and what she's been an otherwise utterly unnoticed life, she felt unheard, or she felt hurt finally. When her supervisor ignored her pleas for paid overtime, when her colleagues snickered at her slower pace and tentative moves, and when she was tired, abandoned, and so alone, it hurt. 
Uh, she would run to her hiding spot or place, flip to the pages so well browsed it was fastened to a spine by sheer willpower, and read the words, certainly not the woman worker. She is her own savior. Her future is in her own hand. She read it over and over and over again. Occasionally, tears would slip out and dry on the smooth weathered paper like little blossoms. Then she would return to her workplace and her pain seemingly cast aside. When the Soviet representative came to the factory, she was ready. Scarcely had the words Marxist feminism flowed from the representative's mouth when she rose to speak, almost talking, talking too fast for comprehension like what I do. She spoke of the need for fellow workers to fight alongside her, not undercut her position. As she spoke, she almost wept with relief. In the silence that followed, she packed her things with trembling hands at, that had left the factory. For the first time in years, she knew what she had to do. She began walking, not quite sure where she would go, but certainly she was headed for a better place. The liberation in the end was on her own, so instead of gender equality, we now have promoted gender equality. So it's now it's just been promoted. It got a promotion. Okay. And power of the councils. As the next step in giving the workers more power over their jobs, the local Soviets across the country will be trusted with a certain level of control and self-autonomy. They will be allowed to set forth their own candidates for representation, as well as be the ones who decide quotas for production and several other measures that deal with their own workplace. Of course, the Presidium understands that no group can completely be trustworthy when they have control, and for that reason, the Director of Revolutionary Preservation will be useful. As a service to ensure everything runs smoothly, they will be observing the different factories and councils, seeking any dishonest man and woman who would dare lie about the report and work. Oh boy. But poverty goes gets a better and as well as industrial expertise. Very, very good. Uh, we're going to go with the right one because uh, growth doesn't really mean too much. It's useful, don't get me wrong, but Russland. Many people remark that a German arrived as a general in the military of a Russian state so close to Muscovy, and especially a communist one. People who spoke to Fritz Schmenkel at length, however, did not remain surprised for long. A deserter from the Wehrmacht, he despised the Nazis with every fiber of his being, had ever since they had murdered his father when Fritz was just 16 years old. Had ever since they imprisoned him for daring to think differently, had ever since they killed the partisans he had deserted to join after years of fighting, and forced him to flee deep into Russia. His German grew rusty these days, for when he spoke it, it looked like him with a mere fixture, suspicion, and disgust. He cannot blame them, not a single one of them. Every Nazi had killed, every part of Russia he helped to bring into the Soviet fold once more, scarcely compared to the countless sins committed by his people. Schmenkel wondered if he could go to heaven as the Christians claimed people did when he died. If not, at the very least, he would make sure a mountain of dead Nazis awaited him in fear at the deepest pits of heck. Peace is impossible until justice is obtained. Hmm. But we still must empower the councils, too. Question of culturing? Oh, question of culturing? No. A culture of questioning. That's a little bit easier to say. We have so, so much to do here, my friends. So, so much. And this is why this video is a little bit longer, just because it was so, so slow earlier. And I apologize once again for that. But, uh, and instead, hopefully you guys are still watching. If you are, I really appreciate it. But a principled response to gender revisionism after we get some more technology done. In which we shall go boom, boom, boom. We can start doing resources, but let's keep doing, uh, improving our tanks, actually. Or at least what we're building for tanks. Uh, IFEs, a few main battle tanks. At this point, IFEs are done. I'm not making any more of these guys. More main battle tanks. There you go. Uh, that's looking pretty good. Cut that down for now. Go up to five. A principle response to gender revisionism. Socialist workers, we hear the cries of the revisionists in our struggle to build a world for the dignity of the proletarium. The revisionist says one of three things. First, the women are physically incapable. Second, the women are emotionally hysterical. Third, that to embrace equality would ruin our traditions. Let us consider the following. To the first, we argue that women are no more physically incapable than are men. Women are rarely seen in manual labor because they have not been given the chance to work outside the home. Indeed, raising a home with little support from a husband can be oppression in itself. Third, to the second. Now, one to two to three, not third. To the second, we replied that women are far from hysterical, the more composed sex. Was Hitler not a male? It was, it was under the charge of male leaders, not female, that the world was swept in war and horror, and that it was under the bourgeois dictatorship of the intellect that the world learned to associate maleness with wisdom and femaleness with chaos. This is oppression in itself. To the third, we retort that the same traditions that give Russia its values have led to it in error and again and again, because Russia loved the Tsar, it slavered before his gaze and expected a reprieve from the first war, and was shocked when the Tsar answered their begging with bullets. Because Russia loved tradition, it hesitated when the Clarion came to call to build itself up with the rest of the world, and for it we are crushed, and Hitler's savages came for us. Our infatuation with tradition will lead us to embrace only the grave. Comrades, you have heard the call for revolution. Let us obey and fight to the end against the shackles that reactionism imposes upon us. Modernity in the classless future awaits the brave. Reject tradition, embrace modernity. And then open the government. Or for your own good, I think we'll probably have to go with open the government. In order to ensure a truly free society, the government must be transparent and open with the people. In order to raise the people's confidence in the state apparatus, we shall open certain archives for public viewing. Uh, and pass in order to declassify certain documents after a statute of limitations has passed. While the security apparatus is important and some things must remain buried, to be open and honest about the people's government is a paramount task. And leak. It is what it is. Another uh, group here, good. 
a principle in response to the crypto orthodoxy. Socialist workers, we have heard the cries of the hidden counter revolutionaries that call themselves Nicodemites, the hidden Christians. And Nicodemite claims three defenses first, that the Orthodox Church must be preserved to keep Russia blessed by God. Second, that the Church contains many within its walls that are innocent. Third, that the tearing down of the churches would destroy our cultural heritage. Let us consider the, to the first. We respond that the so called preservation of Ru Russia's Church led to its near defeat in the Great War and has done nothing for us since the release of the serfs. Religion is an opiate of the masses, and our duty as class conscious workers is to wake the masses from the drug slumber, for that is the worth of any amount of for for forfeit forfeited blessings. To the second, we demand a retraction of this insult to our workers. Our workers' battalions are imbued with the most humane of class values and will gladly see give their lives for the defense of the innocent. They attack only the hidden pr predators of the working class who have absconded the, with the wealth of the masses in the name of religion. Those who are not the enemies of the workers have nothing to fear. To the third, we only call for the demonstration of the so-called values these churches preserve. Do the accumulated wealth and power accrued by the priests now indicate that far from being our moral guardians that the church has in fact acted as a collective racketeers? Let us be aware, comrades, that the church cares nothing for tradition, not for the soul, unless one soul is contained within one's wallet. Comrades, the state has called for a revolution and let us unceasingly vie to outdo each other in zeal to fulfill the mandate. Destroy the strength of the accumulated reactionary force, and let the revolution emerge as a true and better salvation. Let the false priests burn. Let's just think about this a little bit more. Nope, we're going to go all the way. Training, agriculture methods, uh, yes, academic base, research, expertise. We still have a lot of political power, look at that. But then up the march to utopia. With the Republic's new government united and strong, we can begin the march towards the utopia of the future. We will create a society of total social equality, justice for all, unity among all the working peoples of the world, where true communism has been finally achieved once and for all. The workers of our Republic will control their destinies, our scientists will design a new future for humanity, our farmers and agronomists will feed a hungry world, and our brave soldiers will defend the people's revolution what may come. What began in the salons of Switzerland and the back rooms of Siktivkar will reach the hearts and minds of all humanity? Utopia is on the horizon and we will reach it. A simple question. Svetlana sat lazily with the smooth sound of the saxophone and a small book showcasing art from around the world. She read through pages filled with pictures of Inca statues, African masks, Korean totems, and more, finding herself immersed in the history of art. Ideally, she looked towards the cabinet in the study, wondering if there was any hidden history in the trophies and valuables inside. Lost in her idle reverie, she barely recognized the sound of the door opening. Sure, woman, her secretary called, leaning out from the window, or leaning out from outside. He was holding the white handset, covering the microphone. She turned her head, looking at the door. The book dropped, a shallow thud emanating from below. Yes? Comrade Malinina wishes to speak to you. The chairwoman opened her mouth to speak, was cut off. I understand that is your off day today, but she says it will be quick. Svetlana nodded, putting a book on the table. Straight in her office, she took the receiver. Yulia? This may seem a bit sudden, but with all your work on women's liberation, have you ever given any thought to legalizing homosexuality? Svetlana blinked. She'd always just ignore the concerns of the homosexuals, but maybe it was for the best if she finally took up the cause. Svetla, are you there? Yes, I'm still here. She raised the question once more before giving her answer to Yulia's question. I don't see why we shouldn't. And we lose stability. And a lot of stability. It's not worth the hassle. Well, I'll just go with this one. Why not? And her principal response to the working oppressor. Comrades, you have heard the cries of the parasite that labels itself a so-called champion of womanhood in her Muslim comrade's name. The working oppressor, for that is his name, claims that first, the women involved are willing to wear face veils. Second, that removing these veils will scare their husbands and their fathers from socialism. Third, that socialism is not incompatible with the wearings of veils, considered through the first. We only have scorn for the fools and dullards who believe that these women are not coerced. The reactionary apparatus hypnotizes innocent women into self-victimhood, and that is precisely why they struggle with us when they rip the illusions from their faces. Let us ceaselessly destroy their illusions. When they come to their senses, they will thank us. To the second. We are utterly contemptuous of the idea that these so-called swinging socialists would ever be pure enough for the revolution in the first place. Our creed calls for the self-criticism of every aspect of the reactionary lives, and yet it is the removal of these senseless veils that destroys the fabric of the communities. Only their extirpation and assimilation into the enlightened proletariat will suffice for an answer. To the third, we will answer only with disgust. If you have not understood that socialism demands a total extinction of reactionary traditions, you have understood nothing about socialism at all. For these senseless fools, it is worse to work with than to fight, for they will actively undermine your cause, resist them, and drag them to their senses. No matter if the government disagrees with us, the immortal science of Marxism shows us, shows us the way. The revolution alone is right. The vestiges are the future. Alexei saw all manner of characters in his job as a traffic policeman. Bureaucrats, artists, he had even seen the chairwoman herself cross the street. One blow to his whistle, and a slight motion of his hand, and all the peoples of the world, it seemed like, walked across the crosswalk. From afar, he made insights into the people's lives. Most would call it slander. Perhaps it was insensitive, but Alexei did not see any harm in the matter. He blew into the whistle, and fifty people began crossing the street. The man in the fedora over there probably likes to play the harp. The woman in the red blazer likes her tea with milk for some strange reason. The two teen boys over there holding hands. Wait a darn minute. They're holding hands. People could do that 
that now? People, like, focus on the job, Alexi. You're late to let the cars pass, he told himself, blowing the whistle once more, gesturing to the drivers that they could go. Alexi continued working late into the afternoon, the thought of him holding hands with another comrade, until Antonina arrived to begin her shift. He made his way home, silently con contemplating. He walked by posters proclaiming comrades can love who they love in bright red letters. Turning his head back, he thought that maybe he could. Maybe thought he could. It had been a long time since he had fallen for another man. He looked back fondly on that Tom. He was young and full of idiocy back then, talking about how he loved danger. Maybe now he could try his hand at love again. It was all legal now, after all. And maybe, just maybe, he would find someone. But the march to Utopia. With, a new, with the Republic's new government united and strong, we can begin the march towards the utopia of the future. We will create a society of total social equality, justice for all, unity among all the working peoples of the world, where the true communism has finally been achieved. Once and for all, the workers of our Republic will control their destinies. Uh, I think I've already read this one, but I'm going to read it again. Our scientists will design a new future for humanity. Our farmers and agronomists will feed a hungry world. And our brave soldiers will defend the people's revolution. Come what may, what began in the salons and the back rooms, uh, utopia is on the horizon. So I apologize. For some reason, I thought that I didn't read that one before, so... <laughs> I don't know, my, mind's, my mind is slipping right now, but that's okay. That's totally okay as long as my mind is slipping. Cool. I'll go with construction speed. I don't care what else is there. Poverty. Armored professionalism. Uh, we don't need more manpower. Stability is okay. We need to save some of our PP anyways. Uh, equipment. Yeah, we're going to do that one too. Cool. Now we know political power. Housekeeping. Shall we? And 20 is not bad, but it could be better. The working world has not been easy on Officer Tabashnikov. Late life in the Republican police has been a constant struggle from beginning to end. Struggles begin against internal corruption. Struggles with his bosses over funding and manpower. Struggles with those men on the street who did not understand what he was doing was keeping them safe, of course. The rabble did not know how much it cost or the sleepless nights he'd endured, but that was why they were rabble, weren't they? It came as a dull surprise to him when the revolution reached his home in... Scarlet Banners. We suppose he'd gotten lucky. There had been little change. He reported to now a commissar instead of a boss, and his deputies had greeted each other with comrade instead of their first names, and there was talk of hiring a woman, a woman, in the branch someday. Nothing else had changed. Why would it? Everything began to crumble when the order came in from the central president, uh, from the central. Probably HQ. The president's orders were to release everything in a comprehensible format. Nice, safe, and orderly. Well, Tabashnikov knew that when he had to be the one to review his own records, it was the only way to preserve his skin and his service to his people. Too much delay in the balance to risk it, he gave strict orders to his secretary to lock the records down and left for the weekend to settle accounts. He forgot, of course, that his deputies had been appointed to the task as well, and that they had been granted equal access with every same decree that he had opened the records. As Tabashnikov returned, he found his deputies staring at him with something between disgust, fear, and pity on their faces. And a cold-faced bureaucrat with a very, very unamused expression, he began to wonder if the jail cell would have hot or cold running water. Very soon, he suspected, his high would be too wet to tell. He got what he deserved. Military policing the rules of engagement, or an unfortunate side effect. Ooh, what is this? Anything here that we care about? No, 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 no. Ooh, additional expertise. We gotta go with that one. Uh, let's see. Military policing. Uh, change military policing with the rules of engagement. Policing rules of engagement. You actually get, mm, you do lose attack. But we want to increase this probably as much as possible. Watchdog groups, total supervision, kill them all. Um, hmm. We do get more leader experience game. He got what he deserved. And then, learning from the past, restore the Red Army, lessons from the Unification Wars, armor, tactics on South Africa. Oh, armor professionalism, that's pretty good. But lessons from the past. Despite his faults and ultimate failure, Bukharin had great ideas and great plans for the Soviet Union. While we intended to surpass him, it would be foolish to simply discard all of his work. Instead, we'll learn from his reforms and salvage what good he did so far he may serve the motherland even after his passing. By starting a Siberian development plan, focusing on infrastructural innovations and subsidizing light in industry, we'll be able to boost our economy and dramatically increase our industrial base, which will greatly benefit both the people and the country as a whole. Good. Do we not get anything from this one? That kind of sucks. Oh, um, it's not a big old tree, but I do want to push through this a little bit more, so... Um, infrastructure would be nice, but, hmm. What's the other one? Oh, extra influence in the Southern Urals? Yes. It is 67. We only have 17 divisions. If you like to read about this, please go right ahead. Increase investment. Increase investment. Oh, uh, we do not want to launch that stuff yet, so. Increase, increase. You want to maximize that as much as possible. Increase, increase. So we max that out, increase relations, add to our sphere. We want them in our sphere, because I remember doing this before as another uh, player here, so. As another warlord as well. Encourage, increase, decrease investment in Orenburg, decrease, initiate. Okay, we're good. 
and then a union of workers. Rather, toil, rather than the German-held industries, where slaves toil and die in both cruel and inefficient ways, we aim to free the worker by granting him not only a fair salary, but the knowledge he needs to improve both his standing and his productivity. If we instruct our factory crews on the latest advancements in industrial production methods, we'll create a loyal and skilled workforce and make a great leap forward in a quest to save Mother Russia. Followed up with... Ooh, anything else here? Discredit opponents? We don't want to do that. Current influence. Opponents' influence is pretty low, so we're kind of okay. We don't need to discredit anybody yet. A union of peasants. One of the greatest mistakes of the Soviet Union was its excessive reliance on industrial cities. The people need to eat as much as they need in order to both be healthy and loyal, and in larger schemes of things, a famine can be as much as a catastrophe as any military defeat. By providing our farmers with modern machinery subsidized by the state and teaching them how to properly use and maintain them, agricultural output will increase tenfold. An army marches on its stomach, and this is valid for countries too. Hmm. Discredited opponents? Nope. So we keep investing every single day. We're going to get a lot, lot more investment, and then we can increase relations. We can add them to our sphere, which we, we need 100 influence. Our relations can increase further. Uh, increase relations. I'm not sure what that does, so. We're at 50 for that one. Increase relations. Is this good for us? So they're receptive. So yeah, that's good to do. But. A union of peasants shall be done soon, my friends. In three days, maybe two days. Oh, maybe the Commonwealth of England declares war Wales. Very good. If you'd like to read about the improved academic base, please go right ahead. That is something to be celebrated. Absolutely. Oh, very good. Increase investment. Increase relations very soon. There you go. The Special Developmental Commission. Russia is vast and there are large swaths of land yet un, of, full of yet untapped potential. Natural resources waiting to be exploited, fertile lands abandoned, and broken infrastructure can be found all across the motherland and even within the part that we control. By establishing a commission tasked with the individual individuation and development of such areas is of paramount importance if we are to establish ourselves as serious contenders for the unification of Russia. Failure won't be tolerated nor forgiven. And this will get more max factories in state, more construction speed, and equipment will rapidly, rapidly go up. Increased relations, good. Uh, what else, do we have anything else on here yet? Not really too much that we really care about. Good, good, good. A union of peasants? Yes, please. Anything else here? Doesn't look like it. A tight grip in the east? Very nice. Oh, we have 19 divisions. Nice. Urban industrial development. Our cities have been hit hard by the fall of the Soviet Union and subsequent German bombings. Thousands of people live in huts as their homes have been destroyed and damaged power lines and industrial machinery jeopardize their production efforts. Without industry, there's no Soviet Union, which means that we have to restore our cities and industrial hubs to their former glory. Repairing urban centers, restoring electric power, and kickstarting our industry will slowly but surely bring us back into shape and the people will surely appreciate it. Close to rivals, though Russia remains suspended in anarchy. It is through teamwork that we all escape this dreadful era. Warlords from all different Backgrounds await our message. Some may wish for our painful demise. Others may, wish to, uh, may seek to form a friendship. Others may only want to maintain a state of peace. Perhaps we can establish diplomatic relations with our other Russian powers and see how they're holding up. When our proposal, most when our most potential valuable allies lay on the other side of Europe, our only option is to extend our influence in Russia. Sure, with the Central Siberian Republic, an invasion of the Southern Urals. An unprecedented act of aggression are finally dispensed with all diplomacy and launched a mil massive military intervention in the Southern Urals, declaring war on every local power there. This astonishing move has ended all hope for a peaceful resolution to the disputes over the region, and our government and military are scrambling to prepare a response. Our diplomats are encouraging us to come to the defense of the local powers and declare war on our rival. They say we cannot afford to look weak by allowing the invasion to proceed uncontested, and we shall win the undying loyalty of the people in the southern Urals by coming to their rescue. Once the war is over and our rival has been defeated, this will make it easier to persuade the local governments that they would be better off integrating into our state. Our generals agree that we cannot risk hum humiliation by sitting the crisis out, but they do not w believe it is worth coming to the rescue of the Ural states, pointing to our own plans to annex the region sooner than or later. Instead, they advocate for our own intervention. In response, with the armies of the southern Urals already busy fighting our rivals, we would be free to sweep in and capture most or possibly even all the southern Urals. This would allow us to con continue our preparations for the possible future war against our rival. The third option would be avoiding getting directly involved in the situation while we continue preparing for war on our terms. This might make us appear weak and cowardly to our rivals, and we would be handing over a large stretch of Russian territory essentially uncontested. However, there's no denying that we've been caught off guard, and we must be careful not to act too recklessly. Man, as soon as I was doing this right and correctly, these guys want to do some bad stuff to us. But, oh well. Give off for the third time, nothing there. And he's got nothing there too. So, Oh, I forgot about that too. My bad. We're not going to cut civilian spending yet, but that's okay. We could launch that, but we're not going to do that yet. They're aligned. They're receptive. That's good. 
And we've got about 10 days, and i got to get our soldiers on the front line first. Get to the front line, soldiers. Six, five, receptive, four, three. We're poised to go. They're struggling. Two, we're going in. Uh, this direction must be punished. Struck them, struck them directly. We must match them, invade as well. We can afford to stay back. We're going straight in, boys and girls. We're going to spend more money on this. I want as much attack against these guys as possible. Can I increase or add people to uh, our stuff? 50. Oh, there you go. Increase relations. That's good. That's good. That's good. You find them. You beat the crap out of them. What is their template like? Not bad. Not bad, my friends. I do apologize for earlier once again. Just because it, it was not my goal to have this run so slowly. Oh, my goodness. Nice. Ooh, we're not doing well so well down there. How's our... Oh, these two we can wait when we get the bonuses, so... Uh, can we grab this? Yeah, yes, we can. More artillery, yes. What's their strength like, then? He has awful quiet rage, huh? Oh, they have way less uh, manpower. And we actually have more divisions than them, which is good, but it doesn't mean our divisions are any good at all. We might want to help out here. Because if we can kill off all their manpower... Oh, decrease the poverty. If you like to read about that, please go right ahead. Toast the economist. Good, good, good. So we're losing a lot of guys, but they've lost a lot of guys. Eh, not nearly as much, though. Sverdlovsk. If you want to just get to the front lines, that's fine first as well. Get some more max planning done. Because these guys are still have to go in that way, so that's fine with us. Black market available. I don't know why that keeps popping up, though, but whatever. And industrial infrastructure, rural infrastructure, agriculture, iron beasts. Eh, let's probably go ag rural agriculture development. Now that we've set the basis by teaching our farmers about the modern agricultural production methods, we can begin this step four by establishing a concerted development effort for our farmlands. By subsidizing larger infrastructures such as aqueducts and irrigation channels that individual farmers would never be able to afford, we can not only increase our agricultural output but also foster a sense of gratitude among those who will benefit from our efforts. We serve M Mother Russia through its people. Mm, good. Um, keep moving around, guys. Keep moving around. Good. 17,000. We've lost 20,000, which is not good, but whatever. Ah, good. Actually, resource technology, resource supplies. We need more rubber. Everything else is really just kind of okay for what we have. Um, you guys are not connected there, so really, we got to take care of them. We're really lacking quite a few supplies, which is not good. Let's make sure we just do some concentrated attacks first. That'd be good. Good. Let them attack us. Oh, that is not good. These guys are very strong. It's not good for us. Oh, yeah, keep attacking us, guys. That's 23,000 versus 25,000. Not bad. Anything else here, maybe? Maybe, 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 maybe. Um, add the Euro League to a sphere. Good. And integrate the Euro League. That'd be nice. Can't do that yet. Cool. All right, and then you guys go right here. Help them out. Good. They still have, how much manpower do they have left now? Up to fifty thousand. So that's quite a few guys still left. Oh, there's no one there in that tile. Okay. That's good. Oh, these guys are still attacking them down there. That's not good for them. But you guys can still beat them up. Are they still attacking anywhere up north? No, not really. That's fine. Uh, that's pretty bad up here. I don't really want to attack up here at all. Keep focusing a little bit more on the southern region here. Good, and then we shall do military construction, uh, industrial farming me methods. We've already done much for our agricultural sector, but we can do even more. Our motherland is cold and weather, but warm in maternal instinct. If we want to truly rebuild Russia, we must care for everyone, and providing food is the first and essential step. To this end, we shall increase investments in the farming machinery, building even more advanced and dedicated infrastructure, and employ the latest technologies in seed selection and intensive farming. By our efforts, we shall turn every corner of our land into a verdant field. Good, good, good. Alright, anything else here? Not really. 
Can't add them to our sphere yet. Can't integrate them yet. Which we we'll probably want to do after the war is over, actually, realistically. So these guys are not easy to beat. My goodness. We're slowly winning here, even with two two v two. Like it's hard to win. Now you're going to counterattack. Do that. Oh boy. Oh boy. There you go. Even more attacks coming on. Okay. So many different divisions attacking. That's nice, nice, nice. 44,000 are dead. Good, good, good. Ooh, better MTs. Yes, please. Keep going for this, though, as well. Good. Oh, we captured this left house. Arms planning to be honored about that. Please go right ahead. Forward. Good, 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 good. R, 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 R. Nice. 49,000 at 18 divisions max. I gotta be running out of manpower. Yep, we've got 12,000 left. Not bad, not bad. Soon enough, they will run out of that very quickly. Oh, look at that. We got that area too. Not bad. Ooh, actually, maybe you should hold. I wonder if we can do this. Oh, you're all automotive plant. Onward, countrymen. Good, good, good. Oh, these guys are going in too. Not bad. I know they're attacking up north, but I don't really care too much, so. What are you doing, son? What are you doing? Oh, boy. Oh, we lost the plant. So be it. Whatever. And we should do experiment experimental curricula. Uh, I'll do this first. Integrate regional infrastructure. Ever since the fall of the Soviet Union, many warlords and disloyal officers have claimed pieces of Russia as their own. Throughout the years, railroads, roads, and power lines weren't disrupted, repaired, sabotaged, rebuilt, and destroyed again by a variety of different actors. As a result, emergency repairs and a lack of standardization plagued our country and crippled our economy. By instituting a new and uniform set of standards, especially in rail gauges, we'll be able to slowly integrate the infrastructure scattered across Comey, and it'll be a starting point for our future endeavors should we be able to expand and reclaim the lost lands of the good old Soviet Union. Wow. This is a little nuts. So we've killed off about 70,000 while losing 42,000 of our own. Makes sense, makes sense. You guys going too? Uh, both of you going here too. The Iron Beast. Grigory stared at or glared at the Unionists and gave the massive canvas draped bulky thing behind him. Give me one reason why I shouldn't throw this thing off her property right now. In all his years on the farm, he'd worked through half a dozen beasts of burden, all of them annoyances in the flesh, but this is quite something else altogether. The Union is simply nodded eagerly. This machine has been sent to your town by direct order of the Algerian Advancement Council, approved by the chairwoman herself. He spoke the last clause with near reverence. Grigory's already low assessment of the man plummeted so further. He hated blind worshippers of things. Goodness, the Republic, this chairwoman, had, had even voted for her? And most of the metal machines that now ranked his neighbor's fields. God, how he hated them. Not that he believed in God, but the intensity seeming only fitting. The Bolkarevs, and a gas guzzling abomination, he'd been grilling something in his yard when the stench hit and the cutlet had never been recovered. He'd never give in to the monster monstrosity is a unionist, hearing all this shrug ag uh, sagaciously. My orders are simply to pass this to you, Mr. Grigory. What you choose to do with it is your own business. With that, he walked away, and Grigory's sides began the mental calculus of fitting this within an already credited homestead. The next morning, he rose to a flat canvas in his backyard in a distant whirling. Looking up, he was horrified to see his young Andre whooping as he hurt he has cleared a month's worth of harvest in minutes, waving his hand like a cattle herder. Grigory needed his temples. He could feel a fierce headache brewing already. Get that, get down from there this instant. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, good, 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 good. We can integrate them. I don't want to integrate them yet until the war is over then, so. Wow, this is taking a long time. Man, our soldiers really aren't that good. We really need 40 combo wits, don't we? Oh, baby. Oh, we lost his lost arms. Oh, what is going on up here? Okay, 82,000, they've got to be out of men, right? They've got to be out of men. Man, they are. We can't just be all crazy and throw our men away, though, yet. Now, can you guys attack there? Yes, you can, which not be very good. 2v2, you can't help out there, but you can help out here. You guys can win there, which would be good. Ooh, if we could win, like, here or something and cut everyone else in the north off, that'd be very good. Come on, get over there so you can cut the supplies off. And... Oh, get those IVs in there. We got it back. Wait. Wait, what? Are we fighting these guys? Oh, no. Uh, they look like a different uh, map mode or something. Ah, uh, more arty. Good. Can't get that one yet. Let's grab them over here and grab some more land out attack. That's good. 
Add him to our sphere. That's good. Kill them all. Kill them all. Kill, kill them all. Get our automotive plant captured. Very good. Retire thrown off. Very good. Two men. Oh, poor two men. And these guys up here should be starving here, hopefully, relatively soon. Yeah, no, don't let them keep going on, guys. That's not good. Oh, they're still not cut off yet, though, so... Uh, integrate these guys, and then we should do res resource extraction initiatives. With our preliminary investments completed, we can now start a serious resource extraction program. Never, our newer infrastructure and improved working methods are a nice start, but in the end, we can't change the situation on our own. The state needs to intervene with more subsidies. By granting our minds with state funds to buy the latest extraction machines and directly linking our railroad system to each production facility, we'll increase efficiency across the board, speeding up extraction and cutting the cost. We need, to, we need everything to get, to get to save Russia. I'm going to cut these guys down just in case, with the, so we don't need more equipment for that for now. Which hopefully will help us out, but we'll see what happens. Kill, cut and kill. Cut and kill. Alright, uh, hold on. We can't win there. Oh, boy. Two men, I guess we can move in, maybe. My goodness, it's taking so long to kill these guys off. Good, help kill them off. I mean, they're out of manpower, too, which is good, but still. We're completely out of guns, which is not good. But, that's okay. Which makes the next uh, step for unification not too much more difficult. Hopefully. Hopefully. Come on, let's go in, go in. I need to get to Omsk. And then... The means for the future. Finally, our efforts are, being, are bringing results. Industrial and agricultural production have increased by several orders of magnitude, and the people thank us for their newly found prosperity. Our lands have been healed from the scars inflicted by war, and we have recovered from backward ways. However, this is not enough. The Soviet Union we desire does not follow what it leads. We cannot be satisfied with copying what others invented, therefore we shall return to the forefront of an innovation. Our scientists and engineers will work without rest to discover new and more advanced production methods, so that we may forever be able to one step ahead of our rivals, both inside and outside Russia. We can integrate both, but we're not going to do that just yet. Um, Guys, they're not that strong. I guess we're just going to go straight to Ishim, and then that, and Omsk. Get that, and then get the Tata. Why not? Very good, very good. Cut him down, cut him down. Right a bit. Oh, killed off 155,000 of them. Not too bad yet. The dam's done. Good job, guys. Good job. Ah, screw it. Go down here first. Cut him off. Kill him off. Go in, go in, go in. Go to Omsk. We're not going to win everything here, but that's okay. 161,000. I have to get Omsk. That should be it, right? Right? Nice. And we'll do experimental curriculum. The traditional teaching methods and subjects are fine for elementary school. Superior education, however, especially on universities, needs to adapt to the new times where we are stagnation. By introducing new study courses and experimental curriculum, we can revolutionize our education and help our students find what they excel at. Revolutionary minds produce revolutionary ideas, and the Soviet Union is a very embodiment of the concept of a revolution. Very good. Oh, we have arms, so they should be done now, right? Come on, guys, keep going. Screw it, force the attack. I don't care how many divisions die now. If you're in loading LA, if you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. It's different, I guess. It happens every campaign in Russia. Or just a period. So, they have 14 divisions, 168,000 losses. Please, just kill them. Please. Good. And we really gotta get rid of these tanks, which we'll probably do off screen anyway, so. Good, good, good. Head on in. 
Seriously, how are they not defeated yet? Omsk is not easy to defeat. Let that be known. Ah, Borkuta is a capital. I see. But at this point, I don't think they can do too much else. They've lost a quarter million, so... The great classroom meetup after we read about expand vocational schools. Vocational schools teach young students with clear ideas about the, their future with all about a single craft. While entrenched intellectuals consider them somewhat inferior to traditional universities, we are not as blind as them. From their classes come the next generations as artisans, engineers, farmers, and bureaucrats, professional professions upon which lay the very foundation of a country. We shall increase founding so vocational schools and give these brave boys and girls the best possible education with it. They will be able to excel and through it. They will elevate the Soviet Union to new heights of innovation and power. We all serve the Union, and we all deserve the best for it. Also, if you're in the background, there is some... Um, uh, winds blowing because I have my window open, so just let you know. But the great classroom meetup, or mess up. Leonid was perceptive for his age, and so he was the first to notice that something seemed odd. About the recent lessons, they seemed to switch in focus and methodology almost every half semester, and the teachers were looking ever more frazzled. He'd even been earmarked for speaking too much in class. While Leonid was as guilty as any prankster his age, he knew at least how to act innocent when the class was looking. No, something had to be going on. He whispered to his little clique during lunch, for uh, at their age it was almost taboo to ever confess, a great fear to the adults. Gazing around with all the grizzled intensity of a hardened conspiracist, he admitted, I think they've got something going on in their school. There's been a lot of changing around these parts. Petrov giggles, surely you must be joking in our school, nothing ever happens here. If anything, we're getting dumber every, every day we attend it. Vadim nodded, ever the follower, but later it was insistent, as with all the prophets. No, you're not getting it. Think about it. When was the last time you got a test back? Silence around the table. Exactly. We keep changing our lessons formats too. When we were suddenly speaking up in class a lot six months ago, old Miss Adriana called for us to sit down and keep quiet. Then Miss Sakarova told us that, you know, we should try this new drawing thing. Charts? Vadim popped up. Yes, I love that part. Shame they switched right back to reading. I hate long words. He pouted, and the group shared a moment of silence for his loss. Anyway, something's wrong. I don't know what it's about. Leonid shrugged, and his face brightened a little bit. But, hey, I guess there's a bright side of everything, yes? If they keep changing the classes, our homework doesn't matter so much either. He smiled, and that means we can go play with Miss Misha the Alsatian after school. And who's with me? Maybe we can start a pet dogging club. Dog petting club. So hopefully they agree, maybe? I mean, I know we're at war still, but still. We lost 118,000. These guys will have to pay for their ignorance. Guys, you are literally out of manpower. Better industrial equipment. If you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Is Omsk open for business? Well, Japan, you can recognize as much as you want, but uh, there's not going to be too much Omsk left after this. Yeah, they're doing last stand there, I think, so. Get more attack. And you have no upgrades yet, huh? That sucks. You should be able to go in and do well. Wow, these soldiers suck so much. I don't care. We're going to keep attacking. It does not matter. It does And I know we are out of guns. I know we're out of guns, but... Honestly, at this point... <sighs> Fascinating lesson. It doesn't make sense how they can just keep standing still with no guns themselves, but an innovative union. Gone are the days of decadence and backwardness. Gone are the fields tended by farmers and the factories where workers toiled with obsolete farmers. Gone are the child workers in the empty classrooms. This is the new Russia, a new union where progress both for the nation and the people reign supreme. We've done so much, but we still have so much more to do. The past is no longer stalking us, and now we are the ones chasing the future. New investments in science and education will send us barreling into a new era of progress. When do we integrate these guys? Oh, it takes a while. Six more days. That's not too bad. Omsk condemns us. If you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. I don't give a crap what Omsk wants. Come on. Look at that. Ridiculous. We've lost. We're going to lose 200,000 people to this. Oh, man. By the time we're done here. Oh, boy. But a fascinating scene lesson. Like they watched the stars together in the night for them as a child, Christiana. Christian, Christina had always wanted to watch the stars with her own parents, and she made it a point to give her own children every opportunity. They're silent for a while before the great belt and the sky unbounded and brilliant. A few like this could swallow the entirety of one's mind. Christina breaks the silence. I don't hear anything about your school today, Sasha. He's off to do that technical school these days, although she isn't quite sure what that means. What are you learning these days? Are they going through history again? Sasha shakes his head, reluctant. Perhaps it's his teenage bravado or rebelliousness. Christina hardly minds, but she'd like a straight answer. She nudges Dimitri, who rouses himself as from a slumber. Yes, Sasha, are you, going, are you doing well for history these days? In response to her mild frown, Dimitri only shrugs. The father can only do so much. I'm not taking history this semester. We're doing machine work. The parents' eyebrows rise in unison. Machine work so far on the farmlands? 
As the Republic finally got mad, that's news here, Sasha. What are they making you do? His initial answer is drowned out by little Timothy's burbling, and Sasha refusses over the child as he continues. We do, it's hard to describe. Pressers, I guess? They've pressed metal into sheets. We do work on a central lathe, and that's what it's called. We drill holes and cut the metals into ships. They fit in everything from tractors to plans, or that's what the teacher says. Dimitri nods, that's good, son. If you can work with one of those machines, maybe you'll help repair the combines we use someday. Then you can use that as an excuse to be sweet on the Kalinka girl from across the street, yes? Sasha scowls, and makes her throw a reed of grass at him, and the friendly shares a chuckle there under the light of distant and wondrous stars. Maybe, I hope Sasha makes it big someday. So now we're going to pause this as a little bit more and just get a lot more pre prepping bonus. And then just going to kill every single one of these enemies off. Oh! Um. Okay, I was going to... Uh, you saw me stop the attacks, but okay. But Orenburg accepts integration. I'll read this one because I've never done this one before. Our diplomats have returned from Orenburg with their wonderful news. After significant deliberation, the Council of Orenburg has accepted our offer to absorb their territory into our peace state peacefully. The current government will now continue to administer the region as interim provisionary authority until we are able to fully integrate the region. The militias of Orenburg and the surrounding communities have agreed to integrate into our military as well, providing us with thousands of soldiers who are familiar with the local terrain and ready to serve their new nation. Many fear that Orenburg would be the spark that set Russia alight once more, but it seems that diplomacy has prevailed this time at least. Perhaps we can hope that the days of the wars between Russians are coming to an end. They know what's best for them? Good. And just in case. Just in case. And we have more divisions, in which I'm not even going to bother looking at them. Forties. There you go. Oh, no wonder you didn't do that well, because you are not a, a very aggressive person. And let's do one more focus before we end the episode, shall we? Because this has been a very long episode, so I do apologize for this one as well. But, integrate everything here. Um, we don't have anything there yet, so yes. Good, we get a lot more manpower, hopefully a lot more factories. Because my goodness, was it bloody. And launch it. Okay, the black market order failed. I want to see if we can get them in, into our nation, too. And do we core them instantly? Probably not. Oh, we do get them cored. Oh, that's nice. Nice. Oh, up to 30 divisions. An innovative union, not bad. And we shall next do a restore the Red Army. Uh, our Red Army is still a relatively new institution. Formed in the chaos following the coup that brought socialist rule to Comey, the current military force is only intended to be just good enough to carry out offensive operations without collapsing in on itself due to a lack of organization. Unfortunately, good enough simply won't cut it. The enemies of socialism grow in strength all around us and already pose a greater threat than any foe we face during the unification wars. To better prepare ourselves for the inevitable wars of the future, the Red Army must be restored to its former glory. A professional fighting force that resembles the very same army that once stood on the front lines against fascist tyranny many years ago, but I hope you enjoyed this long video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and in which tomorrow we shall reconvene and probably beat up the Central Siberian Republic or whoever unifies the Far East. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.